Oh, man. Oh, man. Tonight was a great night for wrestling, man. If you are a wrestling fan, you enjoyed yourself tonight. Before we get into my thoughts and opinions on this year's Elimination Chamber, I just have to say one thing. I told you. I told y'all. This was going to happen. I have not one, but two championship belts. I am your undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world. And also, I am your in the clutch world champion. I saw a couple of you guys comment on my last video saying, I was going to lose. I wasn't going to win. I'm not going to be a two belt champ. Well, you know what me and Roman Reigns have in common tonight? We walked out with two championships. It feels good. It feels great to have both the gold over my shoulder. Hey, I even tried to offer a winner takes all at WrestleMania. But Dub's scared. He wants to try to do something else. I put the offer out, y'all. You want to know why he's scared? Because he knows that when it comes down to it, and when the the odds are stacked against me, I will overcome. He's not ready. He's not not really won that challenge. It's not about taking his title from me. He just knows what will happen at WrestleMania. But we'll see what happens with that. We'll say that for another time. Like I said, your boy for now. Is still your two belt champion. All right, but enough of that, man. Let's talk about this great, great pay per view. It feels good to be able to say that the Elimination Chamber was a fantastic pay per view. This did not feel like a B tier pay per view, this felt A tier for sure. I gotta give credit to Triple H, man. Even though the weekly shows are hit or miss. The PLEs, the pay-per-views, whatever you want to call them, since he's taking full control, creative control, since SummerSlam of last year, have been nothing but bangers after banger after banger. Even pay-per-views that you don't think that should be good, like Extreme Rules, were fantastic. And this is more or less the same. This was a great show. I can't wait to get into this, man. Uh, we're going to talk about this, break this down. Uh, yeah, man, this was this was fantastic, bro. So, let's start with the first uh, match, which was the Women's Elimination Chamber match uh, to see who's going to be the number one contender to face Bianca Belair at this year's WrestleMania. We had Oscar, Carmella, Raquel Rodriguez, Nikki Cross, Natalia, and Liv Morgan. This match was fun. I enjoyed this. I was not expecting this match to be as fun. There was a couple botches here and there. You know, kind of looks sloppy from time to time. But for the most part, the people that I really wanted to get their shine, they they definitely got their shine. Raquel Rodriguez, man, they 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 it seems like they, they have high hopes for her in the future. It took two women to pretty much eliminate her. And I appreciate that. That shows how strong she is and, and where they're trying to build uh, uh, build her going forward. I can definitely see her as a future women's champion. So I like what they did with Raquel. Uh, Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross. <laughs> what you expect. Carmella being the, uh, the chicken shit heel trying to hide within the pods or whatnot. Um, Natalia. And, uh, uh, granted, yeah, she's like the, the the hometown hero, I guess you can say. But uh, she uh, she was serviceable. Um, and then Liv Morgan, fan favorite. A lot of people still love them some Liv. But at the same time, it's just still hard for me to buy in to her as like somebody that should, you know, is like a real credible threat. I will say I got to talk about the spot of Natalia uh, hitting her with the... Uh, uh, with her submission and then <laughs> Oscar which we gotta get into Oscar 
putting her in another submission and Liv being sent not to the gulags, not to the upper room. She got sent to the quantum realm to see the light <laughs> leave out of Liv's eyes, bro. She couldn't even tap out. She was she was getting brutalized that was hilarious bro she got sent to the quantum realm with ant-man and kang the conqueror that's where she got sent to because she was done like she she was taken out of that man um but yeah uh this this was uh this was a, a fun moment they even gave raquel rodriguez the nice little breaking breaking of the plexiglass moment i thought that was pretty impactful i believe that was on nikki cross uh that that definitely looked pretty impactful when she pretty much tackled her through the plexiglass it was a pretty cool moment but the right person won in oscar no one else in this match outside of raquel would have made sense oscar and her, her new kind of not new to uh more of like a gimmick she had uh before she came to wwe didn't notice her kind of uh persona looks like we're gonna get kana aka oscar versus bianca belair and i'm gonna be honest with you i don't know who you have win i don't know i don't have a problem with oscar winning i don't have a problem with bianca winning hopefully it is a good match I, I am all for Asuka getting her WrestleMania moment. So we'll see how that play out uh, these next few weeks. But I'm looking forward to the match because I know they are going to put on a show, hopefully. And uh, we'll see how things play out there. Next one. And honestly, this probably was the match, in my opinion, that didn't it didn't live up to the hype. It was it it, it the way it ended, it was kind of weird. Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. Now I'm not expecting this match to go long. I'm not expecting this to be in some technical uh, uh, barn burner, but I was expecting a little bit more. Pretty much got the power moves uh, on repeat here. Few spears here. A uh, couple uh, German suplexes. You know, kind of stiff, hard hitting, as you expected. And then um, you, you have a situation where, where uh, Bobby Lashley has Brock in the hurt lock, and I'm like, okay, uh, I'm I'm thinking he's gonna get out of it, like you know what I'm saying, like he's gonna over, you know, you know, overcome the odds and power out of it, but he couldn't, so he did the next best thing, and he kicked him in the balls right in front of the ref. Ref had to disqualify him, and I was so confused, kind of like, huh? I know Bray said whoever wins out of this match, he's gonna face at WrestleMania, but. The feud is probably not going to end there. Like, it, it just doesn't make sense for Bobby to, you know, win the match that way. And then the feud just ends. So, I do feel like he's going to be involved in this match between Bray. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah, between Bray and Bobby Lashley. It only makes sense. Bobby will want to get some type of revenge because it's like, what the hell? I mean, uh, it, you know, it was just one of those type of things where it's like, you know, I, I was not expecting that. So, and it seems like they did a like a turn here like you know the crowd was definitely pro brock here they wanted him to keep f5 in them and all this other stuff but he had he did a heel move so i don't know if they're turning him heel who knows but after the match you know brock says hey you know come here ref and then he proceeds to send him to the upper room f5 him for no damn reason he's just calling the match then he proceeds to uh uh f5 bobby lashley through the table on the outside and just for good measure he picked up the referee again, who's already in the upper room. And now he's just f 5 in the referee's dead carcass, soulless body, just because. And then he leaves. To me, this was, uh, um, like, my least favorite match of the night. And it wasn't bad. I was just hoping a different ending. But it seems like they were, you know, they're trying to set up something, maybe a triple threat at WrestleMania. This could be interesting with Bray being in the picture, we will see how things play going forward, but in my opinion, this was the uh, my, my least favorite match of the night. Uh, the first match started off pretty good with the Women's Elimination Chamber match. This one didn't really have, live up to the hype out as I was expecting. Now, the match I was really looking forward to, Edge and Beth Phoenix versus Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley. I've been wanting Rhea to catch the beats for oh so long. I've been wanting Beth Phoenix to run that fade after they sent her to the upper room at, Elimin uh, at Extreme Rules last year. So for this match, this was fun. 
This was so much fun. I love this. I, I love what they were doing. Having Beth Phoenix and Rhea Ripley pretty much have... They had majority of the ring time. And I was loving every second of it. They're showing Rhea Ripley as a formidable uh, competitor. And they're showing that Beth Phoenix ain't no joke. And she was hanging in with her. I was enjoying their back and forth. Dominic on the outside being a menace. Shout out to the Montreal crowd. And I want to make this very clear. You guys showed up. Just like the crowd that clashed at the castle uh last year this year you guys in montreal y'all showed up and showed out the entire night hearing f you dominic chance music to my ears that was fantastic anytime he was out there they're like f you dominic it was great him getting involved in the match throwing in the brass knucks uh edge getting hit with the brass knucks i'm thinking the match is over and he kicks out. Oh, so amazing. The shenanigans. You knew there was going to be some shenanigans going on. At one point, it looked like Beth Phoenix was going to get sent to the gulags again. Uh, Rhea had her head placed up on the, on, the, uh, on the steel steps. And I'm thinking, no, not like this. But it didn't happen that way. And, oh, bro, just seeing Rhea Ripley get handled outside was fantastic and the right person took the pin i didn't think Rhea was gonna uh take the pin here she's obviously trying to set up a uh you know she has a match against charlotte at wrestlemania so she wasn't gonna take the pin finn balor ended up taking the pin for the one two three and the feud should be done i think that's it i think well actually i, I believe that is it well i don't know we'll see what happens on monday night but apparently uh austin theory on the uh on the press press conference uh, that, uh they had after the show he opened uh i believe he he opened up a uh a u.s open challenge match uh for monday night and i believe edge is answering the call so we're gonna see how that play out will judgment day get involved i hope they don't i think this feud is done you need to move, go their separate ways get get uh edge and something else so apparently he's supposed to be going against finn balor the united states championship this monday so we'll see how that play out but overall this was a fantastic match a good way to end off their feud and i enjoyed it it was great all right the main event the match that we all were waiting on for Oh, no, this is not the main event. My bad. I'm, I'm, I'm skipping ahead of myself. The men's elimination chamber match for the United States Championship. Austin Theory, Montez Ford, Bronson Reed, Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, and Seth Rollins. Not going to lie to you, this was fantastic. I love this elimination chamber match. I love it for one big reason. They made the United States Championship seem like the, one of the most important championships in the company. And I appreciate that. These competitors gave it they all for the United States Championship. And everyone had their moment. I gotta give the MVP to Montez Ford. He showed up and showed out tonight. And I loved it. The crowd loved it. This was fantastic. Johnny Gargano had a nice moment too. Seth is gonna do what Seth does. Damian Priest, I feel like he had a couple moments. But I don't think people were as invested as they were with like Johnny and his moments and Montez and what he was doing. And Bronson Reed, even though he had crickets when he came out there, when he was involved in the match, he started getting some some love. Him bench pressing pretty much both guys carrying both guys on his shoulder for the fallaway slam. I believe it was uh Seth. And Johnny, that was very impressive. I loved it. He looked like a dominating big guy. And I think that's why Triple H put him in this match. Hopefully, we did get to see more of that going forward. But he definitely looked imposing. I loved it. There was even a spot where he was trying to put Damian Priest through the, the plexiglass. It didn't work. Uh, and the crowd wanted more of it. But he's like, I don't give a damn about what you guys want. But overall, this was great. Montez Ford climbing the top to the of uh, the hell in this not hell in this, uh, uh the chamber to do like this spider-man move the way he positioned himself was insane crazy spot he's the guy and it's crazy how they sold this as we get towards the end of the match how they sold this and i like what they did here montez is getting hit with finishes he ends up getting hit with the stomp uh from seth rollins uh, onto like the little the padded area outside the actual ring or whatnot and then he get hit with the pin 
Now, Montez is selling this like a, a damn champion. <laughs> He's selling this. Give this man an Oscar award. Hopefully, it wasn't a real injury, but I do believe this was more storyline purposes. Everyone else that got eliminated, they got, you know, saying rolled out, you know, to, you know, rolled out the, the cage or whatnot, elimination chamber. He was taking his time because he was selling it as if he was like slightly concussed. So they got officials out there. They got everyone out there. He, you know, crowd is pro Montez, you know what I'm saying? They're clapping for him, thanking him for a great match, you know, his great showing and whatnot. So the cage is still open. And all of a sudden, Dolan is the last two people. Austin Theory and Seth Rollins. And speaking of Austin Theory, Austin Theory caught the beats in this in this uh, 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 elimination chamber. Him getting lock, locked in with Seth Rollins and Johnny Gargano as they proceed to beat the crap out of him in the pod was hilarious. So, it's down to Austin Theory, Seth Rollins. Cage is still open to let Montez out. All of a sudden, Logan Paul, as I as I as it made sense, Logan Paul comes out there uh buckshot lariats pretty much uh the sling uh sling buckshot lariat uh seth rollins then hits Seth rollins with his own finisher the curb stomp for austin theory to hit his finisher to pick up the easy win and it made sense austin theory has been just picking up scraps you know he talks a big game but he's picking up these scraps and, and winning just by like you know circumstance you know what I'm saying? And, I, and I, I I like that. Not in the sense that he can't go, but is he was in the right place at the right time once again. And you can tell Seth is visibly pissed. Logan is getting booze. This is what you want. People want to hate Logan. It makes sense. People love Seth. They're going to have a match at WrestleMania, and their match is going to be great. Whether you like Logan or not, you can't deny the dude is fantastic in the ring. And he's a naturally good heel. People don't like him. Make him a heel, which they've done. Have him screw over Seth. And now it's personal. And Seth, oh, oh, I, when you piss Seth off, if you've seen what he did with Matt Riddle, let's talk about your, uh, talk about your wife leaving you. Like, y'all remember that? Yeah, Seth is going to get in his bag. And I can't wait to see how they build up this view because I know they're going to have a great match, bro. They're going to have a great match. They even they may have a match that may steal the show at WrestleMania. So, that's what they look like set uh, look like they're setting up. But ultimately, Austin Theory retains the United States Championship and this was a great 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 um uh elimination chamber. I enjoyed this so much, man. And now we get to the main event. The undisputed WWE Universal Championship, Roman versus Sami Zayn. Like I said, Montreal, y'all showed out tonight. And I thank you guys. To all my Canadian subscribers, thank you guys. <laughs> Even if you weren't at the show, thank you for being Canadian. Because you guys literally made this main event what it was. Even more. Man, the atmosphere was great when roman came out you heard the booze before he got in the ring you heard the f you roman chants and that's all you heard throughout the night throughout this match f you roman chants they didn't bleep it out it's on peacock f you roman chants all match long when sammy came out the ovation he got the pop he got the the, the, the crowd's energy just went insane. Everybody there was ready to see Sammy do the unthinkable. This reminds me, and I said it in the chat on the live stream. This reminds me of CM Punk, John Cena, Money in the Bank 2011. Smaller venue, but still the same effect. Because everyone then was ready for CM Punk to do the unthinkable. And same thing here. You don't get moments like this often. You don't. It's usually 50-50, 75-25. You don't get moments where it's all 100 ready for Sammy. Everyone else don't care about Roman. You rarely get crowds like this. 
The only time Roman was getting crowds like this is when he was the big dog and they were shoving him down our throats. That's when the crowd was pretty much didn't really give a damn about Roman except like the women and the kids. This was 100%. Women, kids, old people, young people, didn't matter. We all wanted to see Sammy get the job done. And boy, they told a great story. For the first five minutes of the match, they're just letting the crowd just have at it. They're cheering, cheering for Sammy. Telling Roman to go F him. Go F you, Roman. Love this. Fantastic. The way this was set up was great. And I, you got to give Roman his flowers, bro. Roman Reigns his, went from one of the most hated individuals and not for the right reasons as a babyface to actually one of the most hated individuals as a true heel. There's no denying it, bro. He has transformed himself into something that none of us thought was possible. He's out there talking trash like he normally does, but it's, it's a little bit more personal now because he hears the disrespect. Sammy's wife is that front row, and he's just being disrespectful to him. Like I, I did this for you. This is what your. This is what he did. I didn't want to do this to him, but I got to. Like he was just being disrespectful, and I loved it. He truly was in his heel bag. For the longest, Roman has been like the cool heel champion. But now he's getting the hate and it's rightfully justified and it's great. So I got to give props to Roman. He, but his heel work tonight, A+. plus. Sammy is the underdog baby face. At one point, Sammy was getting rocked. The crowd was looking, looking sad, depleted. But Sammy would always fight. Sammy would always get a little bit of offense in. Even when Roman is talking trash, slapping him in the face, Sammy would hit him with a, a slap of his own. Now, I did mention this spot. I'm not a big fan of it. I think they do overdo it. One of my There's a few gripes I have about this match. Um, The barricade spot. I think they overdo that spot. Not even just in Roman matches, just in matches in general. I think they need to let go of that spot a little bit. I remember the barricade spot used to be rare and very like, you know, it used to get the crowd lit. Now they're doing it all the time. I already knew what was, you know, happening when they set it up. Sammy's on the outside. Roman runs all around the ring and he ends up diving head first into the barricade. Couple of close near falls that gave me a heart attack. A few times I'm thought I'm thinking Sammy's gonna get the job done. The one time I really thought it was gonna happen when Sammy hit. Uh, at one point in the match, a Superman punch from, you know, Roman Superman punch. Then hit him with the Huluva kick. And I'm, I was thinking it was over. Like, I'm, I'm just, I, there were so many moments like that. Now, here's things where things, you know, we're getting to that crescendo in this match. And things kind of fall off the rail just a little bit. I had a feeling there was going to be a referee spot. As it, you know, it made sense. So, referee ends up getting bumped. He's out. And you always got to suspend your, uh, you know, your, your disbelief for it. Because it's like, bro, they, it's a billion dollar company. They have multiple referees. But that's neither here nor there. That's always been like that. He's out. Jimmy uh, comes out there, you know, starts super kicking him, screwing him over. You know, uh, Roman is, you know, now he's kind of, he's kind of in his bag. And it, it looks like the tables are going to turn. And, you know, Sammy's going to fight to overcome that. And it was a close two near fall, uh, two, uh, you know, a near fall there. But it doesn't happen. Well, actually, this was, I believe this was the moment where Roman hits the spear. And I thought it was over. At this point, this is when the ref had already fell down, I believe. No, this was before. He hits the spear before the ref get, get, takes the bump. And he kicks out, which crowd goes crazy for. Now, the ref is out or whatnot. And then we get to another referee comes out there. Another referee comes out there, nearly gets the the, uh, the count again. We got a new referee. I'm like, all right, let's see where they go here. Referee gets knocked down again. So now we got two referees out of commission 
with bumps you wouldn't think would put a, a referee out of commission. And then, then, then things get interesting. Then that's when we got Jay gets into the mix. Paul Heyman gets out of the chair for Roman. Then Jay stands between Roman and Sammy. Sammy's like kind of hanging on to the ropes. Stand, stands between Roman and uh, and uh, and Sammy. Crowd's going crazy now. Crowd's like, what is Jay going to do? Who is going to side with? And I love the way they frame this. They frame this very well. It con- it brings you back to Royal Rumble this year. How it ended. Where he's like, I want you to do it. Roman gives Jay the chair. Jay has a choice to hit him with the chair. Crowd's chanting no. Sammy's on the ropes. And he doesn't do it. Roman takes the chair. And he's berating Jay. He's, you know, talking down to him. He's mushing his face. Jay's getting madder and madder. Crowd's getting amped. And then Sammy ends up hitting Jay. Roman moves out the way. Sammy hits Jay with the spear inadvertently. And then at this point, Roman proceeds to brutalize Sammy with the chair. And then that was pretty much it. Brutalizes him with the chair. Ref uh, hits him with the spear. Ref comes in here. One with a very slow count. Two and three because he wasn't kicking out of all those chair shots in the in the finisher. It was over, right? Crowd, you when they panned to the crowd, people were legit upset. I, I think a lot of people thought it was gonna happen, just like a lot of people thought the titles were gonna change at uh, over in the UK at Clash at the Castle. It didn't happen. People were upset. People were visibly disappointed. You heard the boos, and all of a sudden. Jimmy gets involved, start beating up on uh, on Sammy. They're going to finish the job, as they say. And all of a sudden, you hear Kevin Owens' music to a great pop. Kevin Owens comes out there, gives Jimmy the beats. Then he gets into the ring, gives Roman the beats, and it was a great moment. What? And then hit him with a stunner. Oh, my bad. And Paul Heyman getting hit with the stunner, too. That You can't forget that. That was... That was beautiful. Roman's in the corner. He's dazed. Sami Zayn finally gets up. Kevin Owens is standing right there. Kevin Owens moves to the side. Let Sami Zayn hit hits him with the Sami Zayn runs at Roman, hits him with the Luva kick, and then that's how the show pretty much ends with Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn standing tall, but pretty much in defeat as the bloodline leaves you know walks out you know still champ well roman still as the champ and we will see how things play out uh going forward on smackdown but the thing i want to talk about and i also if you did if you didn't notice paul Heyman's like i always liked you I, you know i don't really like he was trying to switch sides as he was pleading to roman uh pleading to kevin Owens to not hurt him i thought that was kind of funny so, but yeah, he hits uh he hits Paul with a stunner as well. It was good to see. Cuckoo could you get hit with a stunner? But this was fun. This was this was this was great. My only thing about this match in particular, I do think it was a little overbooked. I do think you could have just had the one referee bump and then kind of went from there. I also think maybe they should have pulled the trigger with Jay turning on 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 Sammy. I don't know. I, I I guess they're obviously waiting to pull the trigger there and take their time with that. But I do think this would have been a great moment to pull the trigger. And then you could add Kevin Owens to come in with the save. You know what I'm saying? Try to help him out. I think that would have been a great moment because then people would really hate Jay. And that's what you want. Because I do think they're going with Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn versus the Usos for the uh, tag titles. And you want it. If you want to build that up. I think a great way is to screw over, over Sami Zayn in this moment because the crowd would have been all over it. We probably would have got some F.U.J. comments, chance tonight, if he would have did that. So I think that would have been the perfect opportunity. But obviously, they plan on waiting on that turn to happen. But overall, tonight's show was fantastic. Um, I, I gave tonight a 9 out of 10. Outside of the Brock Lesnar Bobby uh, Bobby Lashley match, which wasn't really that good, it had some some exciting exciting moments, but it, it didn't live up to the hype. Outside of that, and maybe a little bit of the overbooking in the main event, still fantastic, still great storytelling. Looking forward to seeing what's gonna happen 
going forward on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. And we're on the road to WrestleMania because the next pay-per-view is WrestleMania. So I got to give the show a 9 out of 10. This was fun. One of the most fun Elimination Chambers pay-per-views I've seen in quite some time. Triple H is knocking it out the park. So comment down below. Let me know. How do you guys feel about uh, this pay-per-view? Which y'all uh, which y'all rate the show on a scale of one to ten? What was your favorite match? What was your least favorite match? Let me know down below. And also, where do you think storylines and feud are going to go for going forward uh, as we get closer to WrestleMania? But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. And I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world, and also you're in the clutch world champion the two belt era has begun i appreciate y'all kicking with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace